Hi everybody, so why is Python so popular in education? Why is it used in colleges, universities to teach code? Why is it used in elementary school, high school, middle school? It's used all over the place to teach coding. So what's the reason for that? Well, I was interested in myself when I first started looking into Python and I discovered it in about three minutes after looking at the language. Python is a cool language because A, it reads very much like English. It's very natural. It reads like a human language. Um, it's also in a very expressive language in that with very little bit of Python code, you can get a lot done. So this, you would, you would expect, would sacrifice capability. Not the case. Though Python is easily readable, easy, easy to read rather, easy to write, and it's very expressive, meaning a little bit of code gets a lot done, it doesn't sacrifice flexibility and power. It's actually, in fact, Python is a very capable language. The only drawback with Python, I would argue, well, is the speed issues. Python does not run terribly quickly. But of course, for most applications out there, it's not really that important. And in fact, this speed issue is becoming less and less of, a, of an issue with every passing year, simply because computers and processors are getting so much more quick. They're getting so much faster that it's, uh, it's a non-issue for many applications. Now, I wouldn't be using Python to write a game engine, but you could use Python to support the kernel or the heart of a game engine, which you might write in C or C++, and then you surround that with a bunch of Python to create the rest of your app. But I'm not going to get into that. So because Python is so easy to read, so easy to write, and it's expressive, it's an excellent first programming language. That's why you see it used a lot in schools, because it's just so approachable. and you don't sacrifice sophistication even though it is so approachable. So you can express some pretty sophisticated concepts in Python and uh, without the um, complexity, if you will, or without some of the baggage of more, uh, less human readable language, languages, if you will. So for instance, I'm a huge fan of Java. I did most of my commercial work in the 90s and early 2000s in Java, and Java syntax, syntax is just a nerd word for codes, Java syntax is just a lot less approachable than Python, first of all. Second of all, because Java is what you would call a strongly typed language, there's a lot more code to write to get something done in Java versus Python. Now. There are advantages to Java and the approach that they take, but then again, we're talking about how Python is used in education and why it's used in education. And don't get me wrong, Python is not just a wimpy learning language. It's actually used quite a bit in industry, most significantly AI and machine learning. And let me tell you, AI and machine learning are today what the web was back in 1995. It's extremely important stuff. And you know that Python has a long future ahead of it simply because of, of its AI and its machine learning application. That alone guarantees Python's place. It's going to be one of the key languages as it is today. It will be for many years to come simply because of that application. So as you know, if you've been watching my videos, I've been creating a Python course and I know I've been promising it. it's going to be out soon. And the problem with my courses is that they are designed for schools and classrooms, which means they are far more refined than the typical course that you see out there. There's a lot more work in putting together a studio web based course than creating just a typical video course that you see out there on competing uh, platforms. Well, they don't really compete because designing courses for schools is a very different, different game. So, by the way, if you happen to be a college professor uh, in, or a teacher in high school, middle school, 
who was interested in maybe teaching Python, and you'd be curious to see what I've produced, uh, feel free to contact me, and I can, we can arrange for you to get a demo and a sneak peek at what we have. The course is nearly complete from end to end. Now we're entering the stage of uh, high, high level edits, if you will, and, refi and refinements. And uh, that means I have uh, my editor and we're working to, together to fine tune the course, to polish it. I had a bunch of demo testers who uh, provided uh, some very good insight for me. And uh, based on what we learned from them, based on you know, just the contribution of the editor and so forth, uh, the course is going to be uh, made significantly, well, it's going to be made better. It's pretty good already. we got great reviews from everybody, so it's already pretty good. But again, like I said, when I'm developing a course for the schools, it takes a lot more work to get, get it tip-top and ready for the classroom experience, especially when you start adding in the quizzing and the projects and the code challenges and all the other things that are included with every Studio Web course. So in conclusion... And my apologies to regular listeners who are just looking to, you know, hear Steph blog about stuff. If you are an educator, you're interested in a Python course, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I love working with schools. We have been for six, seven years now. And I think you'll be very happy with the results and the outcomes of using uh, my new powerful Python 3 course. A beginner's course takes people totally new to programming introduces the basics right into object-oriented code. Take care.